Paul spent the summer sitting around, cleaning his rifle and polishing his sword, and swatting flies. There were thousands of flies at Lake George that summer, but there were no French or Indians. In November, the Massachusetts men were sent home. Paul went back to Boston, married Sarah Orne, and began filling up his house with children. There were Deborah, Paul, Sarah, Mary, Francis, and Elizabeth, in addition to two babies who died young. Then Sarah died, and Paul married Rachel Walker, and along came Joshua, Joseph, Harriet, Maria, and John, in addition to three more babies who died young. Paul kept putting up new chairs at the kitchen table, and now in addition to making buckles, spoons, cups, and all the other silver items, Paul had to find new ways to make money. So he engraved portraits, produced book plates, sold pictures, made picture frames, brought out hymn books, and became a dentist. Artificial teeth, Paul Revere, he advertised. He fixes them in such a manner that they are not only an ornament, but of real use in speaking and eating. You would think that with all Paul Revere did, he would make mistakes. But he always remembered to put spouts on his teapots and handles on his cups. The false teeth that he whittled out of hippopotamus tusk looked just fine. Generally, when he did arithmetic in his day book, he got the right answers. Of course, sometimes there were so many different things to do that he forgot what he was doing. In the beginning of a new day book, he wrote, this is my book for me to, but he never finished the sentence. Sometimes he was in such a hurry that his writing looked sloppy. At the end of a letter, he would write, pray excuse my scrawl. Sometimes he was late for his work. There was a hymn book, for instance, that didn't come out until 18 months after he had promised it. Once he built a barn and by mistake put part of it on a neighbor's property. Still, Paul Revere wasn't always at work. Occasionally, he just dreamed. There was one page in his day book that he used simply for doodling. But beginning in 1765, there was no time for doodling. The French had stopped bothering America, but now the English were causing trouble, telling the colonies they couldn't do this and couldn't do that, slapping on taxes one after another. First, there was a tax on printed matter, newspapers, diplomas, marriage licenses. When this was withdrawn, there was a tax on tea, glass, printer's colors, and paper. The one tax England would never give up was the tax on tea. And what did Paul Revere do about it? He became a leader of the Sons of Liberty, a secret club that found interesting ways to oppose the English. One of Paul's busiest nights was December 16, 1773. He prepared for it by smearing his face with red paint and lamp black, pulling a tight stocking-like covering over his head and draping a ragged blanket over his shoulders. Then he picked up his ax and joined other Sons of Liberty, all pretending to be Indians, all carrying axes. And what were they up to?